Hey guys, it's Shane here from Tank Hunter Miniatures, and today we're going through our tank list for the new Tau Codex. Now the Tau Codex isn't actually out yet, but we've seen enough from other people who have managed to get a copy, and enough leaked around, so we can pretty much ascertain what we're going to be seeing and what we've got. Now this was a very interesting codex compared to the others, because there's only four attachments, and it feels like there wasn't a lot of changes either, aside from the battle suits, but that doesn't really affect us. Uh, every tank is the same. Uh, from what I've learned though, their prices are quite increased. Everything's got like a 30 point increase, so that's, I mean, it feels fair. Like we've seen with pretty much most other armies where it's all tanks, tanks are, you know, way above the strength of other stuff. So the point increase seems they know what they're doing now. <laughs> So yeah, let's get into how we're going to make this list and talk about what's really going to make it strong. So the composition of this list, unfortunately, Long Strike is gone. I had a feeling that was going to happen as we saw with Sergeant Cronus. He didn't have a data slate in the new Space Marine. So yeah, I was expecting a named character in a tank to be no more. So Fair enough. So probably the best fit for HQ choice is just a single ethereal. That'll give you the extra command point. So you can't you can't go wrong with that. Just keep him hidden in the back and just pretend he's not there, and that'll be all good. So aside from that, we go to our big hitters, and that is to say our only hitters. Uh, but unlike with the Admech, where we have to fill the slots with the uh, the, the dedicated transport ones, we're not going to be bringing any devil fish. Devil fish won't really do the trick here. They are pretty much just like rhinos. They, they, they can't do a lot outside of transport troops, but that's fine. So let's stick to three sky rays, three hammerheads. We'll go the four piranhas, two, two piranha squads, and let's go six tetras. So three squads of two tetras to fill it in. Now that gives you 1500 points. So if I was gonna increase this to 2000 points, I'd put in the big shooty guy. That's like a Titan, he, you know, he doesn't have arms. He's just got guns. So he, you know, he's a walker, but you know, he, I'll model him out as a tank at some point. We'll, ma we'll make it work. Now the best loadout for these guys. So let's start with the, the little guys, the piranhas. Now, the Piranhas, of course, got their Piranha Fusion Melter, which is Melter 4. It's it's more powerful than normal Melters, but it's still one shot, you know, hitting up four if it's non-guided, and why would you guide a Piranha just to shoot once? I, I guess two shots with one with each guy, but still, it's, it's not really going to be doing much, and it's like Melter, yeah, you're not really going to hurt a vehicle, you yeah, know, you're going to do, you know, up to 10 damage, but you're not going to wound, really. It's going to be so hard to wound. It's not a great choice, I don't think, the fusions. What you're going to want to do is just go with the burst cannons, you know, that with the, the Tau guns on that as well, and just load these guys up as anti-infantry. Just have them do all the shooting you can at just nothing too crucial. Just more shots that you can just blast everything out with fast. Have them just picking off the little stuff. That's going to be best for your piranhas. Because their secondary mission is just to um, guide for other stuff. Because they're pretty good at guiding. Not as good as the tetras. Now the tetras, of course, are going to guide for your bigger guys. Because they have the marker lights. And they have the ability that they get to provide a full reroll when they're guiding a unit. So the tetras are going to be pretty crucial here. Now the sky rays, you know, they're... They're sky rays. You can't actually do anything with them. They are what they are. So what that is, is they're basically a three las cannon shot gun, which is pretty decent. So they're going to be pretty much anti-large, anti-big stuff. Not a lot of shots. And yeah, like I said, unless it's flying, unless it's guided, it's not very accurate. So you're going to want to really pick your targets well. And we'll get to that in a second, why that's so crucial. So then we got the hammerhead. Now, you might think you're gonna wanna take the rail rifle, because that is insanely powerful. It's strength 20, the rail rifle cannon is, it, it's just insane. It does the most damage of most, you know, non-Titan things in the game. 
and you think, wow, that's, that's really cool. But I'm going to be hesitant to bring any more than one because we've already got the Sky Ray. The Sky Ray is doing a, you know, big damage. It's big las cannons. So the Rail Rifle is really going to be overkill in so many cases. It's like you're shooting some Space Marines. Yeah, you can kill one Space Marine at a time, especially because they change devastating wounds. So that's not going to proc over. So I'm going to be very hesitant to even bring one of these guys, but I'll bring one just to, just for the sake of it, you know, to come in handy. The rest, you're going to want to take the Iron Cannon, because that's still pretty decent. That's going to be pretty strong against most things. And yeah, that's pretty much the only blast weapon you've really got for the Tau. They really don't do blast. They're, they're so direct with their shots, yet not that accurate, just without help. So... That's where it's really going to struggle against big blobs. There isn't a lot of, there's no blast, no large number of shot guns that they really have. So really got to make use of the ion cannons. They're going to be very important for this list. Now, as I mentioned, there's only four detachments for the whole codex. There's the crew one. So not really any help here, unless you want to get some fire support for your crew, which is a good idea real good idea that could go well but the other one of course is the battle suits so that's like your far sight enclave one the close combat with your battle suits if that's your style which helps nothing in tanks so the only thing that helps tanks is the montcar or the cayune and it's more or less they help everything they don't specifically do anything for tanks but you know we'll accept that so when you look at these they're both pretty good you can't really say one is definitely better than the other because it's very much depends your play style how you're gonna try and go for the win if you're gonna spend your first two turns sort of lining things up getting in a good position then going in hard or if you're going for the montcar going in hard and fast first like both are good and both very much support it in these detachments. So it really comes down to the strats. Which strats are really going to help you out better? And I feel Montcar just has the bit more of the edge. Because it's got a good defensive one with a cannon defense. It's expensive. But yeah, minusing the damage from the attack. That can really help keep your tanks alive for longer. And counter offensive you know that's a grudge so just one thing is marked as a grudge you can do that you know as much as you can in the game just full rerolls that's great the aggressive mobility the auto advance that's good focused fire the extra ap for two units taking down one big unit that's great focus fire is a good one whilst with the kayon kayon oh well <laughs> uh these are interesting because because like i said it's the two good ones you can do, the point blank and the tempting target, you know, you can't do that till third battle round. So you're sort of sitting there, not really making use of these things for two whole turns. And if you don't really put an edge in early game, it's going to be hard to come back. Like if any detachment or any army could come back, this would be the one, but this is, it's going to be really hard, I think. So the point blank ambush, and again, that's within nine inches i don't really want to be within nine inches if i'm tau i want to shoot from farther away so that's you know that's not really preferred uh the tempting trap one is pretty good especially yeah, if you did go the melter for your piranhas because now you're wounding stuff on fours like big anti-armor stuff you know that really helps the melter and the coordinate that was the good one where you're basically guided for two units instead of just one. But again, it's just one target though. So I feel Montcar is just going to be the better one. You're, you're better off getting that early lead advantage than trying to set things up, let someone have an advantage and then take it off them. You're better off not leading that to chance. You're better off just putting yourself out there first, hard, fast, then going with it because if you've done it right you lose some bonuses after turn three but you should have set things up you should have done enough damage that that's very difficult for your opponent to do after turn three they shouldn't have much left after turn three so i feel that's going to be the right one to do especially for an army like this but really for any it's yeah 
I think this is one that's going to get a lot more play value out of. Now, the biggest thing to overcome here, though, is the greater good ruling. As Winters was saying in his video, he was very surprised they didn't change it, as it's really hard to get to work well, because, like you see, your plus one to hit against one thing, you know, you can ignore cover, that's great. But if you want a split fight, you won't, you just don't want to hit everything in one squad, that's really hurting, because now you're hitting on fives against everything else, and especially for tanks. So a tank, if you look at the, the hammerhead, you've got a rail rifle. You know, that's one big long range damage. But then you've got other weapons you've got on him. You've got your burst cannons or your smart missile systems. And that's not necessary to take down the same target. It's probably not even in range of the same target. So you've got all these shots going nowhere. And when you don't have that many shots, you don't have that many models. You really need to split these attacks up, but you can't. Like when I was playing my guard, you know, I had the heavy flamers going into one target that was in front and the battle cannon, you know, going across into something else. That's what you have to be utilizing with these low models kind of lists. So this is really going to be challenging with Tau because, yeah, I'm going to want to put the burst cannons all the smaller the pulse rifle shots into other stuff but that's going to be more difficult when i've already highlighted i want to shoot the big guns at a larger target so it's a lot more thinking because it like it punishes you for making not super optimal choices here that was the same with the admech it punishes you for making the wrong decision if you want to sit or move or yeah just picking anything like that while it's all the other ones pretty much this guy is now good pick a guy he's good pick a thing that's bad that's it that's so little thought and it just works now if the bonus was a lot better like if it wasn't just you know the plus one to hit and ignores cover if it was like a plus one to wound as well maybe if if it was really worth it that could really work well so yeah, I, I just already see from before I've even tried it, there's going to be a lot of challenges here. I know infantry spam, that's going to be hard to hard to fight with this army. Yeah, having a lot of targets that I have to switch between and just not having enough shots, that's going to be difficult. But, you know, we'll try and overcome it. Like, these are still, they're still high strength, they're still good weapons everything that has is good like nothing super bad it's just not the most effective so we'll definitely see this may be something i want to try again different ways it might just be like with the ad mech and it's just a one-off no this doesn't work <laughs> but we i mean we tried this before this worked great against custodies you know when you had the bikes and i just needed to rail rifle down the bikes it was small models uh, so yeah, this is going to be great against elites, uh, big monsters, stuff like that. Like a, a Crusher Stampede, I think this is going to do really good against. But if we go up against uh, like the guard squad that was all infantry or all gaunts, that's where we're going to get in trouble. So, but on the plus side, everything has fly, so I guess I can get out of combat easier, but mm, we'll have to wait and see. So, yeah. That's um, that's your tank guide for Tau. Hopefully it's been enlightening for you, answered some questions you were thinking. Uh, but yeah, let me know how you're going with your Tau. Um, a lot of people are upset about the whole battle suit change. That was a weird one. So yeah, do we think Tau are going to be on top? Is this really going to push them up? Or, or are they just going to be the same where they were? Or even maybe lower? We'll, uh, we'll wait and see. But uh, yeah, until then, I'll see you soon. Bye.